Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Today we're going to turn a bottle stopper. These make great gifts and they're also good sellers at, at craft, craft fairs. A little later in the video we're going to talk about uh, bottle stopper design. I like, to, I like to use these stainless steel bottle stoppers from Ruth, Ruth Niles. I'll have a link uh, in the show notes to her uh, website. I think the stainless steel and these are these are food FDA uh, approved food compliant stainless steel and food compliant uh, nitrile O-rings that make them seal real well. I think they just create a perception of quality that you just don't get with uh, a cheaper uh, versions such as cork or, or silicone. But uh, obviously, you can can save a buck if you like to if you want to. Uh, blank size can vary uh, quite a bit based on your design, and we'll talk about design a little bit. A little bit later, uh, I've measured some of these that, that I've got, and uh, they vary anywhere from oh about one and three eighths of an inch to a little more than one and a half inches. So typically, uh, the blank that you're going to want to have is going to be somewhere between one and three eighths and two inches square, and about two to two and a quarter inches long, or 35 to 50 millimeter square, and 50 to 56 millimeter uh, long. Now you can you can turn these things from uh, acrylics. You can use an exotic wood like this uh, coca bolo. You can even use glued up uh, wood such as this piece of uh, burl with a little piece of veneer and some maple. Domestic woods are, are fine. I would say if you're going to do a production run, uh, take a longer blank and consider turning it, uh, cutting it diagonally like this on either your bandsaw or your table saw. It, it'll make things run a lot smoother. Uh, in trying to bring it, uh, rough them to round. You can obviously use figured wood, you can use uh, spalted wood like this maple, you can use burl, just whatever scraps that you have available. Now one of the reasons that these blanks don't have to be too long is you don't want your bottle stopper too tall. If they're too tall they won't fit in a in a refrigerator. But it all depends on your, your design. Alright, we're going to use a piece of maple uh, that was cut oct octagonal. I'm using these 35 millimeter jaws. I'm just going to snug it up just a little bit here and then bring up the tailstock and center it on the hole that I've got uh, where I'm marking the center just to kind of get this thing squared up. I'm using a piece of uh, very dry, dry maple and now we're going to pull this back. Before we drill the hole in here, I'm going to just face this off just a little bit because even though it's been cut on a chop saw, it doesn't have as smooth a surface as I'd like. So we're going to get the speed up a little bit. And we're going to use this negative rake scraper and just clean up that surface just a little bit. Okay, that's got it. Now, we're going to drill a hole. Your experience might, may vary. Uh, we were, we're using a 3 8 inch uh, mandrel. The drill bit I'm using that I found works for me is 11 30 seconds, but you might use a 5 16 inch, or some folks have uh, some folks have used 21 64 or 23 64. But like I say, the 11 30 seconds is going to work for me. Okay, we're going to drill a hole just uh, about uh, 5 8 of an inch deep. The, the stud on our uh, bottle stoppers are at a half an inch. The mandrel is 5 eighths of an inch, so we're going to drill a hole just a, a shade deeper than 5 eighths, so this will fit flush against the, the mandrel. We're going to drill this hole at about a uh, speed of uh, somewhere between 500 and 1,000. Now, depending on your design, you might want to use a Forstner bit to drill a slight recess, uh, and the size is going to vary based on the bottle stopper uh, size you're using. I'm going to dispense with that. Since I've got this flush, it's going to register flush against it, so I'm going to be, be happy with that. So we're going to go ahead and take this off. We're th going to thread it on. I'm using uh, Ruth Niles. Uh, mandrel which works very well, threads right on. Uh, she has an adapter as do some others that fit in the Morse taper or uh, 
but with a draw bar, but I like this better because it's easier. Now this is a 3 8 inch self-tapping, uh, 3 8 by 16 self-tapping uh, mandrel. It's got this cutaway here, and that enables this to be threaded right on. Before I thread this on, I'm going to put just a little bit of wax uh, on this on these mandrel threads. A little piece of candle wax works, but I tell you what, I've been switching over to this uh, slick stick by Wood Turner's Wonders because it works on any place a candle will work, but I think better, including band bandsaw blades and cleans your it cleans your CBN wheels. So uh, this is something to look at. I don't get anything for this. I just like the product. So we're going to thread this on. Bring up the tool rest. That's doesn't have any nicks, but I'm just going to put a little bit of that on there as well. All right, turn this round. You could use you could use a lot of things. Uh, generally, a spindle roughing gouge works great. I'm going to use this uh, continental kind of flat gouge, and I'm going to turn the speed up just about as fast as this thing will go. I think I'll get a smoother cut. So I'm about almost at 3,200. think about what kind of shape I'm going to be turning. I think I'm going to turn a shape similar to this. This is one that someone had given me. A uh, One of the demonstrators one of the symposiums gave, was in the habit of giving his camera operator something so that's where this this came from. So, But I'm going to do something different with the top. We'll talk about that later. So uh, it's let's see if I've got it round, round here, round here. I'm going to switch to a, a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. I'm just going to leave this sitting up here where I can see it. Kind of watch the profile. All right, I want to come straight in so it doesn't skip. Here's the bevel of the tool going straight in. And I'm bracing it. Cut it in from oh, probably back here. I didn't get this profile exactly right, so I think I'm going to take it down just from here. Start that slant. Make some of the excess here so I can Okay, I think that's about the profile I want, and now this end is going to come over here just a little bit. Whoa, I didn't enter it in properly. Didn't start to cut. We'll do that end later. Now I'm just going to taper this. A very slight curve. Remove the tool marks. Nice and clean there. And I think I just about have the shape I want. Turn it off and Look at the surface. Yeah, I don't really have any bad tool marks, so this is not bad. So uh, we'll worry about sanding that up in a moment. Now we're going to come to the end of this because we're going to do something. We're going to talk about decorating in a minute or design, but for this particular one, I want to do something a little different. Instead of just having a flat, I think I want to add a little bit of an insert. We'll talk about those a moment later, but I've got a choice of a couple of these. Um, let me try to measure one of these. I Probably better ways to do this, but this will probably work. So by hand, I'm going to put this right here. Looks like it's just about spot on. 
All right, so I'm going to come across from there and then come in with a, some type of scraper. I'm going to lower this just a little bit. Again, I've got it at a pretty high speed. I'm going to come in here, pick up the cut, just remove some of this wood. Now I'm going to come in with a square end uh, box scraper. I think I'll just use this as a parting tool. I think this will work. Straight up and down. Not cutting very well. Maybe I'm pressing too hard, but that is in grain, so it is kind of tough. Come back and remove that that excess. This didn't seem to work very well, so let's do a box scraper. You know, a box scraper is is uh, shaped like this. And it's got a bevel on the side, the bevel on the front, and it's less than 90 degrees here. And it's great for doing tenons. I'm going to have to go ahead and move that tailstock to get it out of the way. I'm using my little uh, Laguna MIDI lathe for this demonstration. Uh, I don't use it too often for, for these videos because I've got to do a different camera setup, which is a little more of an effort to set up. But it is probably a better representation of what most of y'all, their newer, newer turners, are dealing with. And when you have a larger lathe, you get spoiled with things like not having to move the tailstock. You just slide it down the bed where you get out of the way and you still get out of the way your tool handles. And that's not always the case with many lathes unless you have a bed extension. That's the tapered side. Almost. Just whisker away. Just a whisker, so I'm gonna put more in the middle and just come across. Okay, now I've got a nice, nice fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on here, and then we'll come back. I'm gonna use epoxy. Uh, or actually, you know, rather than mix epoxy, I may use some carpenter's glue. i uh, probably have to wipe this down with acetone first. I don't know if I mentioned, this is uh, ebony. So ebony sometimes has a lot of uh, resin or oils in it. So if you're going to glue it, glue it or finish it. Sometimes you need to wipe with uh, acetone. Now you could use CA glue, but frankly, over, over years time, they sometimes can get brittle. Uh, I'd prefer to use carpenter's glue. Epoxy would work real well too. It's a little more trouble to to uh, to mix. So I'm just going to use some tight bond carpenter's glue. Just put a little bit on here. Maybe put a little bit in here. A little bit up around the edges. Edges in place. All right. While well, the glue is uh, giving the glue a chance to uh, dry, let's talk a little bit about about design. For this particular style, not necessarily this profile, but doing an insert, I'm using a piece of ebony. If you had a darker wood, you could use a lighter insert. You could put a piece of burl in there. Uh, you could do other inserts, such as this uh, U.S. Army uh, button off my Class A uniform. Uh, keep in mind, these make great gifts if they're uh, if they have some particular significance to the recipient. If you're going to sell them, uh, I would say it reduces your market and, and you're going to then have a wide variety of stoppers that won't sell until just the right buyer comes along. So sometimes simpler and more generic might be better. But if you've got a, a, a veteran, this would be a great, great idea. Uh, cabochons. I got four of these things from China for about, for less than $3 delivered, which, I, you know, I got to believe that the po our U.S. post office is subsidizing China. That makes no sense at all to me that they could deliver them that cheap, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, so with something like a stone, uh, you might want to use, instead of a carpenter's glue, you might want to use some type of 
expanding CA glue or some kind of flexible glue, uh, perhaps uh, uh, some type of silicone glue. Just kind of keep that in, in mind. Okay, talking about design, uh, I forgot to mention you can also always uh, put burn rings on your design. Um, coins are a good thing to put in. Foreign coins are especially good. Uh, this U.S. quarter might be a foreign coin to you guys and uh, outside the U.S. such as Great Britain, but here in the United States, uh, maybe this uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, 10 pence coin might be just kind of interesting to some folks, or this uh, two-color two uh, coin that I picked up on a, a visit to Chile a couple of years ago. You know, uh, just lots of different different techniques. Let's talk about shapes a little bit. Um, here's, here's an example of, of a number of different shapes. They can be all sorts of uh, styles. Uh, here's one that's I made uh, like a chess rook just because I've been turning chess men so it seemed like a, a cool idea. Uh, the key is sometimes the simpler designs are better. Um, don't, don't add too many uh, doodads and, and gadgets on them. Don't have a point at the top because if somebody's putting the cork in, it, it you know form follows function. So keep don't don't have a sharp sharp point. Uh, here's one that I think I showed the blank earlier. That it, it's a glue up. Uh, I was visiting a wood turner down in Hilton Head Island, and and he made a lot of things out of burl. So he took the scraps and made a bunch of bottle stoppers out of them. And it has this tiny little piece of veneer, which I thought was a nice feature. So. Uh, I, I model my design very, very much after, after uh, his. These take a little more effort, uh, so you know they're nice, but they do take a little more effort. Sometimes you're better off using just using an exotic wood, but I know a lot of people have uh, preferences for not to use exotics because they feel like we're endangering the rainforest. And who knows? Maybe we are. Don't know. I don't want to get into that political discussion. Another, another option depend, based on the wood, in this case this is some uh, exotic, I made this one a long time ago, you can use, uh, do texturing on the outside. I could use texturing on here, I don't think I will. Okay, I don't know what happened with this last file when I was cutting this, but the file was damaged, uh, so I couldn't, get, I couldn't show that cutting, but basically I used a uh, 3 8 inch spindle gouge to come around. And then I did a little bit of cleanup with this negative rake uh, scraper before we uh, finish sanding it. Okay, I'm going to sand through all the grits, 120 up to about 400. And I'm using a sanding, sanding lubricant. Uh, if you don't know what this stuff is, uh, there's any number of things you can use, including walnut oil, but this is uh, beeswax and mineral oil. Uh, but it, it keeps it uh, running cool, makes your, keeps your paper lasting longer. It develops a slurry, but the biggest thing I like about it is it keeps down the, the really fine dust that harms your lungs. That's the beauty of it. So for beginners, take note. Take care of those lungs if you want to be turning a long time. I'm going to wipe this off. Get rid of any residue that's there. And next thing I'm going to do, there's different finishing protocols, but the one I'm going to use, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some, some gloves. For you beginners, uh, if you don't have a supply of nitrile gloves or some other, if you're using solvents, protect your hands is, is the point. The, the reason I like this and what I'm using is Mylan's sanding sealer is it dries extremely fast and it, the, the bad news is, or good news depending on what you want it gives you kind of a matte finish but the beauty of it is it dries super fast now let's put on another coat of course these things they tend to seal the pores which protects the wood alright now I'm going to use a uh, sanding abrasive to get rid of the really fine, fine scratches. Uh, this is a homemade uh, batch of this stuff. You can find that uh, I did a video on making this stuff. It's similar to the lubricating mineral oil beeswax, except it also has some diatomaceous earth, basically triple E. You rub it on, 
with the lathe stationary and then it, it helps develop it, it polishes but it also helps fill in the pores as well so we're going to go at a fairly slow speed initially and you can feel this cutting because it is an abrasive compound and now for my final step of the process I'm going to use you, you could use wipe on poly um, there's any number of finishes that you could use that might work uh, well uh, but I'm going to use a friction polish which is basically um, alcohol a little bit of wax a little bit of uh, shellac and some people say well it'll alcohol will remove it well yeah but if you put this on this generally seems to hold up fairly well for bottle stoppers because I know a number of people use this so we're just going to put that on and then we're going to again, use a little friction to burn off the alcohol we're going to put on two coats and then we're going to put a coat of wax as our final coat, keep fingerprints off. Wax is not really a finish, it's more of a protective coat, uh, but it's temporary, so don't think wax is going to be a, a really good final finish, something that's going to get a lot of abuse. Uh, I met Ruth Niles uh, about the second year I was wood turning at a symposium, very nice lady, uh, She and then I saw her every year coming to North Georgia, one of the two symposiums we had, uh, or both of them, so I saw her uh, fairly often. Uh, she makes, she's a wood turner herself, and she makes uh, coffee scoops, and I admired them, and I turned some like it and posted it, and then Joe Herman, the editor of Wood Turning Design, says, would you like to do an article on those coffee scoops? So, since it was her design, I asked Ruth if she had any plans to do an article, if she'd mind me using her design. She said, go for it. So, I did, and so, this was the first article I ever published, and that encouraged me to go on to do a number of other articles, and since then I've probably published well over a dozen articles in several different wood-turning publications. Now, uh, although this is dry, it's not. it takes 24 hours to cure, so don't get your fingerprints all over it, but that's pretty much done except screwing on the, the bottle stopper. So anyway, Ruth came up with the idea of stainless steel. There were some other ones out there that didn't hold up as well, uh, chrome, chrome plated. And, and since then, she has a, a number of different bottle, st uh, bottle stopper styles. So not only will they fit wine bottles, but they'll also fit uh, liquor bottles. Uh, and there's a small, a medium, and a large. I had a friend of mine, a neighbor, who was in the... Uh, uh, liquor industry and he tells me that the more expensive the bottle the smaller the the opening because you get more and more careful about pouring it and you pour smaller amounts and you pour it over less and less ice so uh, don't know if that always holds true but there are different size uh, liquor bottles generally her, her basic wine a bottle stopper should fit most uh, most wine bottles but but these things so uh, the point I'm trying to make is is these various bottle stoppers will fit not only wine bottles for wine connoisseurs but for also for liquor drinkers and, and also for other bottles in the kitchen such as uh, vinegar oil salad dressings and, and that sort sort of thing so makes gifts for for even non drinkers as always I welcome your your comments uh, and su suggestions uh, for you first time viewers I especially appreciate any comments or suggestions you might have uh, maybe for a future video. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.